Welcome to this next LM Trip Reports video. Today I'll be taking you on a tour of London's transport options through this London travel guide with an aim to give you the best advice if you're a newcomer to this busy and bustling city. I'm starting here at Royal Oak on the busy throat into London Paddington here. One of the easiest ways to travel around London, if you know, is a London travel card. You can purchase these from most ticket offices on TfL uh, and anywhere on the National Rail Network. And it's also val valid for any travel between the London zones given. So this one's valid on London zones one to six. It's also cheaper sometimes than using Oyster. If you especially are going to spend the day in London, you know, maybe the family want to come, that is the best way to do it right there. My first featured travel option will be TfL Rail, which will soon become Crossrail. Here at Paddington, it operates a shuttle to Hayes and Harlington and also to the Heathrow Airport services. So without further ado, let's explore TfL Rail. TfL Rail operate out of two London terminals, those being London Liverpool Street to Shenfield and London Paddington to Hayes and Harlington, Heathrow Airport and more recently, Reading. The company will form Crossrail once the core section opens, that date is yet to be announced, where services will then operate from Reading and Heathrow Airport through to Shenfield in the east and also Abbeywood in the east. You can use TfL Rail with either a contactless bank card or Oyster card by touching in and out at each station as desired, or by using a through ticket or a London travel card as I have shown earlier in the video. This is London Paddington where TfL Rail operate outwards to Reading, Hayes and Harlington and Heathrow Airport. At the moment, the Heathrow Airport services are only being operated with the existing Class 360 trains. However, the Class 345s are in operation on the Hayes and Harlington and Reading routes. These services will be forming the main part of Crossrail once the core section opens. As I stated earlier, that date is yet to be announced. So, moving forward, we then transfer over to Hayes and Harlington, which is the terminating point for one of the TfL rail services out of London Paddington. This service was initially operated by Great Western Railway, however has now transferred over through to TfL rail operation. The Class 345s, as you can see here, operate on this route and uh, make Hayes and Harlington one of the destinations where you can change for alternative stations to Heathrow Airport. At the moment, TfL Rail only operate to Heathrow Airport from London Paddington. However, in the future, they'll be operating from Heathrow Airport out to stations such as Shenfield and Abbey Wood. The brand new Class 345 trains are very nice inside and spacious. The aircon is uh, extremely well maintained, uh, which means that it's uh, very well and, uh, and works extremely well when you need it to work on those hot summer days. And uh, in the winter, the train is nice and toasty and warm. Um, making the most of that new uh, Bombardier feel to the train. So, as the train pulls up here at Hayes Harlington, we're going to have a look at it. Uh, the doors on the services automatically shut, um, as they do on many Bombardier trains, uh, to retain that, uh, that air, um, air conditioning inside, make sure it's not too cold. Uh, and they're very spacious inside, as you can see here. Uh, there's a lot of room to manoeuvre and move about. A lot of room for people to stand on busy days too. There's seats, forward and rearward facing. However, no tables installed, because the uh, trains are not operating on such long routes and they're not intended to be operated uh, uh, and sat on for that long. Uh, the services do not have any toilets, unfortunately, so um, toilets uh, are required at the stations that they serve. All stations are required to have toilet facilities since the trains do not have them themselves. And uh, this is the TfL Rail service still under Paddington from Hayes and Harlington. London buses operate all across London. You would be hard pushed to find an area of London where the iconic red buses do not operate. You can use London buses by utilising the Oyster card or your contactless bank card. Just touch in when you enter the bus and there is no need to tap out, unlike on TfL Rail. The new London buses, as seen here, are nicknamed the Route Master after the original hop-on, hop-off red buses which were designed to replace the previous Route Master bus. And they entered service in 2012, just in time for the London 2012 Olympic Games. Travelling on the buses is easy and convenient. They are very frequent and often a valuable and good alternative to other modes of transport in London, such as Tube uh, and even taxis and travelling by DLR, which we'll explore further and later on in the video. 
a lot of misconceptions can be thrown around about traveling on the buses um, they are actually quite reliable uh, although I have been on several that have failed it is very unlikely uh, that you'll be on these services yourself uh, they're very easy to jump on and jump off uh, and they can quickly get to your destination despite the uh, traffic there's a lot of uh, specified uh, London bus routes where they can travel uh, avoiding all the heavy traffic in London so they are a good option if you need them one of the most popular modes of transport in London is the iconic London Underground or Tube as they like to be called there are a total of 11 tube lines in London which serve a huge variety of destinations in the city from as far west as Heathrow Airport on the Piccadilly line as far north as Amersham on the Metropolitan line as far east as Upminster on the District line and as far south as Morden which is on the Northern line you can travel on the tube by simply tapping in and out with your Oyster card or contactless bank card which is much like TfL Rail or you can travel through by using a through ticket or a specified London Underground ticket they can be found there usually pink uh, the tube can get busy especially during the week uh, at peak times that's all year round but generally it's a quick and easy way to traverse this busy and bustling city there are many tube lines which can take you to a many great destinations as you can see that gentleman there was checking out the tube map tube map is available at all stations and you can easily find where you need to get to next it's one of the most easily signposted and easy to use modes of transport in london uh, and it has been specifically made for tourists people that aren't common uh, and don't appear in london uh, as often as other people would some of the tubes are very fast just like here uh, you can travel on some tubes that do go upwards of 50 miles an hour. The Tramlink, previously known as the Croydon Tramlink, started operation in the year 2000 and is a light rail tram system that serves Croydon and the surrounding areas in South London. It is known as the first tram system in London since 1952. The tram network consists of approximately 39 stops along 17 miles, which is 28 kilometres, of track, including some that are shared with London's road network and others that are shared with the National Rail Network. You can travel on the trams by using your Oyster or contactless bank card, much like other transport systems in London. It is all integrated to work hand in hand with one another and you can transfer from the tube to the tram link all on the same Oyster or contactless bank card. You can also use travel cards on the Tramlink as long as they are specified to include London Zones 3, 4, 5 and also 6. The London Travel Card 1-6 to six, therefore would be perfect to use on the Croydon Tramlink. You can no longer buy tickets for the trams as all the ticket machines were withdrawn throughout a project in 2018. New trams are being introduced to replace the existing Bombardier CR4000 models. These are built by Stadler and these are Stadler Variobahn trams, which can be found in service along the tram network. You're going to see a few videos here from the cockpit or the front view of the trams, which provides a unique opportunity to see into the driver's cab, much like the ICE trains in Germany. And you will also be able to see other shots, such as here, where you are passing the Third Rail National Rail Network, uh, which is operated by Southern. This is quite a unique experience because you can see how low down the trams are in comparison to the trains. But it is also quite a good experience because you have uh, a lot of different power modes there, with overhead lines for the trams and Third Rail for the trains. The trams can operate with very close proximity to passengers, much different to trains. Uh, and are therefore very easy to uh, operate and very easy to navigate uh, although they operate some quite deep gradients as you can see here uh, with this tram going down to Wimbledon this is the uh, original uh, Bombardier CR4000 tram uh, this tram's heading down to uh, Wimbledon but therefore you'd have to apply quite a great uh, amount of brake approaching these uh, stations since the uh, incline is quite steep uh, known on the Croydon tram link the trams are spacious, they operate a lot of room, and they're quite easy to use. You can just hop on and hop off much like a London bus, and that makes them quite attractive to the people that use them, 
They were also quite frequent when I was travelling on them on this day. They were operating every four minutes. Here is a video of the new Stadler Vario Barn trams that you can travel on uh, right now, and they're operating on the tram network if you wish to try them. These are the new trams replacing the older models. London Overground, also known as THE Overground, is a suburban railway network serving London and its environs. It was first established in 2007 to take over the previous Silverlink metro routes. The company now serves a large part of the city, as well as the home county of Hertfordshire, with a total of 112 stations along nine different routes. In the west it serves Richmond, in the north it serves Cheshire, in the east it serves Barking, and in the south it serves West Croydon, to connect with the aforementioned Tramlink. You can now use the London Overground with an Oyster or contactless bank card, as well as purchasing normal paper tickets from ticket offices. Be aware that much of the network now has ticket barriers, which have been installed to combat revenue protection, so tapping in and out or having a ticket on your journey is absolutely imperative. New trains have been introduced on the Watford Junction to London Euston DC line, as well as the Gospel Oak to Barking line, and these new Class 710s from Bombardier feature plug sockets in certain locations, as well as onboard free Wi-Fi and a general improve to the environment tenfold. As you can see very shortly, they've also been repainting their existing fleet in a slightly new livery. Uh, this is just to uh, update the trains and make them look like they've had a bit of a... Uh, a refurb. They have also had new seat coverings installed inside uh, which make them look a little bit more pleasing and line them up a bit better with the current 710 fleet. Uh, these class 378s here will be retained and therefore are being repainted and upgraded just so that they make and uh, um, basically line up with the new class 710 fleet. Santander Cycles, also dubbed Boris Bikes, are a public bicycle hire scheme in London. There are 839 stations across London to use. You simply find a station, hire the bike, get to where you want to go, find a station and dock it, complete in the rental period. The pricing is £2 for 24 hour access, then the first 30 minutes of rental is free, after which each additional 30 minutes are £2. More details are available in the description below with a link to an informative video. It's so simple when you understand how it works initially, and there are loads of these stations all across London. You'll be able to find these wherever you are. The Docklands Light Railway, or DLR as it is often abbreviated, is an automated light metro system that serves the redeveloped Docklands area of London. It was first opened in 1987 and has also been extended multiple times and now reaches north to Stratford, south to Lewisham, west to Tower Gateway and Bank in the City of London Financial District and east to Beckton, London City Airport and Woolwich Arsenal. There are seven lines with a total of 45 stations on the network. You can travel on these automated trains by means of using your Oyster card or contactless bank card or by using a travel card as long as it covers the appropriate zones. These can be found in a typical tube map so please ensure you purchase the correct travel card that is applicable for your journey. The DLR also offers one day and season DLR only Rover tickets plus a one day DLR rail and river Rover ticket for the DLR and the river boats and so we'll talk more about them later. In 2017 TFL opened bidding for new trains for the DLR and in 2019 CAF or CAF was announced as the winning bidder and these new DLR trains will enter service in 2023. These trains are easy to use and they're very fun to travel on. Uh, the lack of a driver or cab offers passengers an unparalleled view of the track in front and the DLR is also the subject of a cab ride style video I hope to film later this year for this channel. The Emirates Airline is a cable car link across the River Thames in London. I bet when you clicked on this video you didn't expect to see a cable car featured in a London travel guide. After all, we aren't in the Alps. The service first opened in 2012 and serves just two destinations, that's Royal Docks for the DLR and Greenwich Peninsula for the O2 Arena. 
you can use Oyster or contactless bank cards on the Emirates airline. However, as it is not integrated into Transport for London's fare system, a surcharge of £3.50 is applied. You can also pay by cash on the day and the price is £4.50. These prices are correct as of February 2020 and can change. The journey offers an incredible view of the O2 and the surrounding area and it is well worth the trip, although it is subject to weather, so may be closed if the weather is too windy or inclement. However, as you can see on this date, they were operating as normal and it is a great opportunity to travel even in bad weather. The Thames Clippers are a riverboat service on the River Thames in central London. The service first began in 1999 and has four lines with 22 terminals in total. The boats serve Putney in the west all the way through to Woolwich Royal Arsenal in the east. However, some of these services only operate at certain times, so always check before you travel to ensure you aren't waiting for a boat that may never arrive. You can pay using your Oyster pay-as-you-go or contactless bank cards to pay for your journey. And once you are instructed to board, you may touch in and touch out when you disembark. There is also an app you can use specifically designed to pay in advance, which might make payment a lot easier. Much like the Emirates airline, a surcharge is applied and ranges from £4.40 to £9.90 for a single journey. But this can be reduced if you touch in using a contactless bank card or your Oyster card, or even if you pay through the app. As mentioned earlier, you can purchase joint DLR, Rail and River Rover tickets that can be used on these services also. If you possess a travel card, you are also entitled to one third off the normal single journey price. These boats are a joy to travel on and feature indoor seating as well as a cafe on board where you can purchase light refreshments. The journey times can often be long since the boats tend to stop at all terminals along the journey and depending on where you want to travel it may not be your fastest option to get there. Shortly you'll be able to see some footage of travelling on these river boats uh, under Tower Bridge which is one of the most famous landmarks in London. As you can see here the Thames Clippers as they're known fly the royal flag on the front uh, signifying that they are Great Britain uh, and this is one of the uh, nice features that they fly uh, on most of their boats along their journeys. This is some footage of the boat arriving at the east end of its journey. Just pulling into the pier now, which is not an easy manoeuvre on a boat, I can tell you that for sure. Uh, and once it arrives, you can then uh, let the people disembark first and then you'll be advised that you'll be able to board by one of the team on the pier. It's an easy and convenient way to get around the city. So without further ado, here's the footage from Tower Bridge. The London Taxi or Hackney Carriage has been a celebrated icon of British life since the 17th century. These cabs can be found almost anywhere in the city and have a fare structure governed by TfL, meaning that unless you book through Uber or a third party company, you'll pay no more than what is stated on the TfL site. This travel mode concludes this London travel guide today, which I hope you've enjoyed.
Thank you for watching this London Travel Guide video. I hope you have enjoyed it and found it useful. We have covered all the travel modes in London, some of which I bet you didn't even know existed. Till next time, this is LM Travel and Photography, and see you soon. Bye bye.